I'm Mitch Marks with HBK, and today I'm going to be talking about motor harmonics, the calculations, and, and tracking motor harmonics. So uh, when the motor's spinning, it, it's driven by the fundamental of the current, um, and this fundamental has orders or harmonics of it that might be of interest for various reasons, and we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, HBK makes test and measurement equipment. Specifically, we have an E-Drive power analyzer. Um, that's really great for measuring efficiency or understanding how your motor operates and is and is controlled. Um, so a lot of you are probably already familiar with harmonics, but for those who are not, you know, maybe your test engineer has been told that you need to track down, um, you know, the third or the fifth harmonic, a little intro. So harmonics are multiples of the fundamental frequency present in a sine wave um, and kind of the idealized um, uh, uh, example for harmonics is a square wave because a square wave is an infinite series of sine waves. And what we get is let's, let's have this kind of square wave approximation. The fundamental is going to be, you know, sine omega T. So we're going to get this really nice, smooth sine wave. The third harmonic is going to be sine three omega T. So we're going to have three times the frequency and we can see one, two, three peaks per fundamental. <clears throat> Um, over three, and the amplitude is going to be thirded. Uh, the fifth harmonic, sine five omega t over five, sine seven omega t over seven. Um, and, and this doesn't always reign perfectly true in, in the motor, but I think it's a really good starting spot. So our harmonic equations are sine to the n, n being the harmonic omega t over n, uh, again, being the number of the harmonic, um, where omega t is two pi, the fundamental frequency. And these harmonics can be seen in our AC signals. And, and OK, this is great, Mitch, but why do I care? Well, one, we, we care about losses. Um, not all of these harmonics do useful work. Um, some cause negative work or negative energy. Um, so let's look at my little math here. And I, I, for those of you who know me, I'm not the biggest math guy. Um, but let's take the fundamental. And our three-phase motor has windings distributed by 120 degrees. So phase A is at zero, phase B is at 120, and phase C is at 240. And our order of rotation is ABC. This is positive torque. We don't have a second harmonic because of the um, uh, even nature of, of the, the signal, because it's got positive and negative. It's got that um, duality. So it, the second order harmonics cancel each other out because it's a sine wave. Um, our third harmonic, so we have three times zero is zero, three times 120 is 360 is zero, three times 240, 720 is zero, so we get no rotation. So the third harmonic cancels out. This is cool. So we don't have to worry about the even harmonics. We don't have to worry about the trip line harmonics. How about the fifth harmonic? This is a fun one. Five times zero is zero. Five times 120 degrees. And remember, this is coming from the fact that that fundamental frequency is five times. We get negative 120 and five times 240, negative 240. And because we're operating at five times that fundamental and the math just works out, we get CBA. This fifth harmonic causes negative torque. This causes negative, or, or I shouldn't say negative losses, just causes losses. Um, so this could be bad. Seventh harmonic, we get positive torque, uh, but maybe it's not in phase, maybe it's causing torque ripple. Um, this is some cool stuff. So why do we care? Because these harmonics have their own individual losses. They can cause positive or negative torque, but maybe not where we want it. And, um, you know, they, they do result in mechanical output. So we could have noise and vibration. Um, anytime you're causing torque, you're causing radial forces. Um, harmonics can absolutely result in torque ripple. Um, and we can use them for motor control. Sometimes we want to inject harmonics. Sometimes we want to use the harmonics to our advantage. Um, so that's why we care. We care about losses. We care about torque. We care about the mechanical output. So what causes harmonics? And again, I think this will be the end of the review. Um, the machine excitation. So this could be just the standard three phase excitation or the inverter excitation. And I love this example here. So this is uh, PWM voltage in blue and um, PWM current in red. And we can see that our PWM coming out of that inverter has these little square waves. And what do we remember about square waves? Uh, that they cause all kinds of harmonics. 
So we're pushing out these little square waves into our motor winding. And fortunately, the motor winding acts like a filter. But we get this current. And we can see that we have this, you know, kind of jagged current ripple that's proportionate to our switching frequency. And this is really, you know, kind of where we see a lot of harmonic content. It's at a multiple of the fundamental frequency. Um, so it's, it, it absolutely has a, a harmonic order. Um, and, and this just trickles down. So the inverter can absolutely cause harmonics. The three phase system can cause, uh, uh, three phase excitation can cause harmonics if there's anything non-sinusoidal. Uh, we also have machine construction. There's the magnetic construction, which is not gonna be perfectly sinusoidal. And anything that's not perfectly sinusoidal is, is gonna cause a harmonic element. Um, and the winding distribution. We can wind the machine to try to even out that, that harmonic content, but we're never gonna do it perfectly because there's no such thing as a perfect sine wave. Um, and then the machine control. And this is kind of result in conjunction with the inverter. Um, but we could inject harmonics, we could uh, minimize harmonics, we can play around with how we do the switching frequency to control what the harmonic content is. So the excitation and the machine construction are the two big ones. All right, a little, a little technical dive into, into the harmonics. So um, when we're measuring some harmonic content, um, we need, need to signal at a sufficient bandwidth. Nice typing, Mitch. Um, we need to measure the signal at a sufficient bandwidth. So we need to measure it um, at a high enough frequency so that we can understand the, the content we're interested in. And now the Nyquist frequency, everybody's, you know, relearns this in school. It's two times the frequency of interest. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, we really want to sample probably 20 times higher than our frequency of interest. And, and we want the frequency of interest to be within the filter constant, constant of our, our frequency. So your instrument's gonna have a filter on it. You want that filter content, con filter constant to be higher than the frequency of interest. So if your fifth harmonic is at 500 hertz, you probably want your filter to be at, you know, have that 3 dB point of um, 600 hertz, which probably means you're sampling at something like six kilohertz uh, or higher. So filter higher than the frequency of interest uh, and sample much higher than the frequency of interest. Um, there's a lot of different types of analysis for, for kind of the harmonic content. And in my image on the right, um, I have a three or a, a current, a PWM current. I have a torque signal from a motor and I have a accelerometer. And we kind of zoom in on those signals in the bottom here. We can see my current is sinusoidal-ish. My torque is also sinusoidal-ish. Um, and I have an FFT in, in the region. So fast Fourier transform in this red region. And we can see my current has this nice fundamental frequency has this nice fifth harmonic, has this nice seventh harmonic. And then we can see my torque ripple and my accelerometer um, have some content as well. And I show this because we can do these types of analyses on any signal, on current, on torque, on acceleration. Um, and we can do all these analyses types on, on all these different signals. So we can do an FFT, which is that fast Fourier transform, which is just kind of this quick snapshot. Uh, we can do harmonic order analysis. Um, where we need to know the fundamental frequency, but we can take that and, and really analyze in depth. And then we can do a uh, harmonic power analysis where we can actually look at the power content of each harmonic. And I'm gonna talk about these three individually in a moment. Um, and, and these analyses can be executed on any signal as, as long as we, we have some sort of fundamental excitation. So we can look at current, we can look at torque, we can look at acceleration, and we can look at how they relate to each other. Um, there's a pole count between kind of the torque and the um, current, uh, but what we see is that, you know, basically the, the third harmonic is, is lighting up um, a lot of this acceleration, a lot of this torque ripple. So HPK makes a product called eDrive. It's really great at analyzing motors. Um, and why is eDrive great at analyzing harmonics? Well, we offer custom real-time equations. Um, what this means is that if you want to understand something like what's the power of my third harmonic um, or, or what's the injection of my third harmonic or what's the status of my system, we offer the ability to implement your own equations 
that are executed in the real time. So you can cut down on post-processing and you can really understand the values of interest. Um, maybe you're, you're setting up your machine and you're turning it on for the first time and you're troubleshooting it. We allow you to store a lot of data or if you have a customer who wants data, if you have need to justify something, or if you just wanna do more in-depth analyses or, or correlation to your models, we have um, the ability to store lots and lots of data. So you can really understand your whole system. Um, we make a simple data collection of electromechanical signals. Uh, we have this card-based chassis um, where we can bring in voltages, currents, but also accelerometers, microphones, torques, speeds. So you can start bringing in this kind of whole environment and maybe understand how your harmonics are affecting your torque, how your harmonics are affecting your noise and vibration. Um, it's a really cool ability to understand the whole machine. And then we have local support and training. Um, and this one is, you know, if your job is not NVH, but you're assigned measuring some accelerometers, um, this is where we can really help uh, because we have experts in a wide variety of measurement domains. Uh, and we have people local to almost every region globally. So um, really wanna get you up and running faster. We offer a full suite of sensors, current sensors, torque sensors, load cells, accelerometers, um, software, and then data acquisition hardware. All right, so how does HBK do an FFT? Um, well, the FFT is just a simple fast Fourier transform and you pick a, area of re a region of interest um, you set a frequency that you want to zoom in on, and it's a simple frequency and amplitude, uh, and you get a quick snapshot of what the frequency content is. And here I have a voltage and a current. We can see my fundamental frequency somewhere around 200 hertz, third harmonic. Uh, actually, no, that's, uh, yeah, that's the fifth harmonic, sorry. Fifth harmonic, seventh, you can see all those harmonics. You can see our switching frequency, um, and it's just calculated over this window. This is kind of the quick and dirty what's happening. Um, and you can view this fundamental frequency in the harmonics. You can view the switching frequency in harmonics. Um, so we have a FFT that's just a quick window. Um, and for a lot of people, this is good enough. Um, but what we'll find is that some people want to do some really in-depth analyses. So this is really popular in grid work. Um, it's also just generally pretty popular for, for people who are getting their machine up and running. But, but anything that touches the grid, this is like the and all analyses, the, the aerospace guys love this stuff too. So harmonic analysis of the fundamental, um, or, or if you're from the NVH world, you might be able to call this order analysis. Um, so we take a signal, so I've got a current in red, I'm just looking at a single signal for simplicity today. Um, and we have this, you know, sinusoid. Well, I take my two cursors and I say, okay, I wanna analyze all the, all the signals in between these cursors. So we run a thing we call cycle detect, where we actually identify um, every half cycle of the fundamental. Um, it's a really cool thing we, we use a digital algorithm for. Um, we identify the frequency, and then we take all the multiples of the frequency. And we can see here, I have 30 harmonics plotted out. So we give you things like, what is the fundamental? What's the DC offset, the RMS um, for the period of interest? What's my THD? Here it's 13%. Uh, THC. Um, and then we have the individual harmonics where we see the amplitude of the fundamental or the first harmonic. We call that 100% and you know what the frequency is. We then take every harmonic from there. We give you the amplitude, um, the percentage of that amplitude. And then we plot it out on a bar graph. And this is a uh, non-log versus log scale. Where we can see the contribution of each one of these up to the 30th harmonic. And we can make this number whatever we please. I just chose 30. Uh, but we can see that kind of bar graphed out and we, we, we can identify which harmonics have the biggest contribution over a time period. Um, so we can understand our harmonics with respect to fundamental frequency. We can view signals as a percentage of the fundamental and, and we can view them as bar graph. So I, I really love this, uh, this little add-on we have, um, this harmonic order analysis, because uh, it really lets you just kind of understand, okay, this is, this is my 30 harmonics. This is my 100 harmonics uh, and, and what that means for the system. So this is cool. And this requires understanding the fundamental frequency and having sufficient data points to get those harmonics of interest. All right. 
Tracking harmonics and harmonic phase. Now this is my absolute favorite because this is the real nerdy one. Um, so sometimes, you know, in that second or third slide, I mentioned that we can create power or, or losses with our harmonics. Well, here is an example of tracking the fifth harmonic. So in our digital signal processor on our cards in the real time, um, we can track individual harmonics. So we do the real time calculation of the RMS of a harmonic um, of the fundamental. And basically what I have up here is, all right, I wanna look at the current RMS of the fifth harmonic. So we have an equation for that and this gets executed in discrete time. I take the average of it over, over a period um, just to get kind of a sane rational output. So I average over 10 cycles. Um, I take the voltage RMS of my fifth harmonic. I average that over, over 10 cycles. Um, those are electrical cycles. And then I figure out the phase for both of these because the harmonics have phase with, with respect to one another and with respect to the fundamental. So I take the phase uh, and then I just multiply the RMS of the fifth harmonic times IRMS of the fifth harmonic times the cosine of the difference of the phases. And I'm actually calculating what is the power contribution of my fifth harmonic. This is really cool because this is all being executed in real time. We're seeing all this as a scope trace. And, and we can see that here in my example, where I have my fifth harmonic RMS in blue. Uh, and for this given test, I was ramping up speed, um, holding a given speed and then ramping down speed. And then I was holding a constant torque the whole time. Um, so we can see that, that kind of harmonic content creep up. We can see that phase goes from pretty much dead net zero to, all right, we've got some phase content uh, and then back to zero speed, no more phase for the current. We're tracking that fifth harmonic of the current. We're holding torque, but, but that harmonic content goes up as we speed up. We hold for a little bit, then we ramp down speed. We can see the phase here really doesn't change at all, uh, kind of constant phasing. And then we can look at our power. And we can see all right, our powers, really no contribution to loss. Oh, all right, we're, we're creeping up. We're offering you know, right around five, 10 watts of loss uh, contributed to my fifth harmonic. So we can track losses due to individual harmonics. We can understand how harmonic injections are working. We can actually really look at the operation of our control of our machine and start to look at those detailed uh, areas. And you know, when you start identifying, hey, five watts came from my fifth harmonic, that's pretty cool stuff in my opinion. Um, so I think this is a really powerful tool. I, I really hope to see more people using this. Uh, it is becoming more popular, but you can look at your injections, you can look at your loss contributors. Um, I would love to see more people doing this. So with that, I hope this was helpful. Um, please feel free to reach out with, me any, with any questions. This is kind of a, a really deep topic. Um, if you wanna learn more about our products, you can scan this QR code here with your cell phone. Um, otherwise, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm on LinkedIn. Again, my name is Mitch Marks and I work for HBK. Thank you for your time.